What up world? RJ Perkins here on behalf of Aesthetics Training and Nutrition. How you doing? Um, so today I wanted to shoot a video on a very common topic uh, that I get a lot of questions about from my clients um, as well on forum boards and just general emails and so on and so forth and that's about tracking alcohol. So for many of us that do not know or who do not know, um, what I want to be able to do from this video is kind of run through this board for you and pretty much give you some tracking examples and pretty much level sets you to help you understand how you should track your alcohol intake. Look, we all love to drink, especially if we're not during, uh, doing a show prep, it's in our off season, we all love to enjoy drinks, right? So my wife and I love beer, she loves wine, you know, we love to enjoy, um, you know, alcohol with our dinner, for out with friends and so on and so forth. We all love alcohol one, one way or another. Uh, we all love to enjoy drinks and want to keep that fine balance in our life. Um, so from that perspective, it comes a question of, well, how much is too much? What are the impacts? Uh, what can happen? And so on and so forth. I'll do more videos on that topic and more specific, um, specificity. Uh, but what I primarily wanted to talk about is how I'm being able to make alcohol part of your day to day intake. Now, again, I'm going to preface this at this. When I say date part of your day to day, I'm not talking about being able to drink a six pack a day um, or to be, you know, over the top with your intake and your alcohol uh, drinking. What I'm actually talking about is being responsible, you know, maybe one beer a day, two beers a day, uh, but being controlled, be, 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 having it be able part of your day to day lifestyle. So from that perspective, again, let's just go ahead and get some, some general information, the details, give a little background on some things, and then we'll talk about it. So please excuse the whiteboard. I'm still working on how I'm being able to be better with it. So, uh, but glad I'm able to have it to provide some insight and detail. So from that perspective, let's talk about this. So a lot of people don't know. So when we talk about macronutrients, we're talking about three main macronutrients, proteins, carbs, and fat. A lot of people do not know and understand that alcohol is a fourth macronutrient. All right. So uh, alcohol is pretty much, let's just call it a sugar. Right, so alcohol is a sugar-based uh, nutrient, um, and from that perspective, a lot of people forget about it. Right, and there's always a lot of jokes that alcohol, uh, that caffeine is the fifth macronutrient, which it really isn't, but it's just a, a joke. Uh, but from that perspective, we should know, right? So from a protein's perspective, uh, there's four calories per uh, gram of protein, uh, carbs, four calories per gram, fats, nine calories per gram. And from an alcohol standpoint, it's pretty much of a different number. It's kind of in between. It is seven calories. Um, a program of alcohol consumed. Um, so from that perspective, let's just kind of understand why when we look at uh, a beer can, a wine bottle, or other things and stuff like that, how things don't add up and why alcohol is not considered a macronutrient. Because uh, if you actually go and you look up and pick a beer can, I believe, you know, not name dropping, but a very popular light beer out there per 12 ounce can is about 96 calories, which is part of my example down here. It's 96 calories, but if you look on the can, it only says it has about five carbs. That doesn't make any sense. So if you add the five carbs uh, times four, that's 20 calories. There's 76, there's a delta of 76 calories left over. So you pretty much don't know and understand trying to figure out, well, where are those other 76 calories? Those are going to be pretty much an alcohol standpoint. I'm going to make it a little bit simple um, and the general recommendation that I provide all my clients for them how to do it because it can get really granular of trying to set up and trying to be uh, taking this number and breaking it down into different specifics and how you'll be able to track and so on and so forth. But from that perspective, let's talk about why alcohol is not representative as a macronutrient and truly accurately reflected on labels, okay? Um, so this goes back to the prohibition, right? So after prohibition was done and alcohol was legalized again, uh, from that perspective, it was regulated by the Department of Treasury, okay? So from the Department of Treasury, um, the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau took over the management and taxation and control of alcohol. Right, so it's not regulated by the FDA. The FDA manages all of our agriculture, our foods, um, you know, dairy, meat, and other uh, forms of the food industry. So with the FDA not regulating and not managing the taxation and the controls over alcohol and tobacco, um, it's not gonna adequately reflect on your nutrition label. Okay, kind of making sense here, right? So because the FDA doesn't have any regulation over it, um, it's not properly reflected. So being that the FDA regulates foods, lettuce, chicken, cereals, and all these other things and so on and so forth. Um, that's why we see these three main macronutrients. Uh, from an alcohol perspective, that's why it's not reflected on the label. All right, but it is considered a macronutrient, but that's why it's reflected as a calorie, but that's why it's not representative as a nutrient. Kind of contradicting, but whatever. Um, so that's kind of the why. A lot of people ask, well, why isn't it represented? Why, why, why? So again, after prohibition, the Department of Treasury um, took it over and the control of taxation 
uh, via the Alcohol and Tobacco uh, Tax and Trade Bureau. So pretty much, again, the Department of Treasury uh, manages the taxation and the uh, control over alcohol, not the FDA, so that's why it's not regulated in on your nutrition labels. Um, so from that perspective, let's kind of just go in really quickly into tracking examples. So pretty much, we're going to track all alcohol sources the same. So whether it's beer, wine, liqueur, or liquor, you're going to track it the same because, again, alcohol is the same um, um, caloric value across whatever platform you get. So let's kind of like take a look at this, like wine. If you look at wine, uh, if you look at the carb source, the carb source is likely going to be like the grapes, right? So grapes are a food. Food is regulated by the FDA. That's why it's on your nutrition label as a carb source. From a beer perspective, you're looking looking at things like you know the barley, wheat, and other sources on how your beer is brewed and whatever type of mixture. Maybe they're going to brew an IPA with grapefruit. Those carbs are going to be represented in those um, aspects of things. Liquor and liquor, really there's no nutrition labels because it's liquor. It's alcohol. Straight alcohol, straight liquor. So from that perspective, there's not going to be any caloric values uh, presented on it. But from that, we're not going to make this difficult. You're going to track all sources of these alcohol sources the same. Okay. So let's kind of take a look from my previous example. right? So if you're looking at a nutrition label for a very popular light beer, it's 96 calories, I believe. Um, so if it's 96 calories and it's listed, and again, this is not 100% spot on, but if the can is listed that there's 10 carbs, that's going to be 40 calories. Okay. From that, there's a 56, um, there's 56 calories uh, mis missing. There's a 56 caloric delta between what's listed as carbs and the verses of the uh, kcal total. So again, 40 kcals from 10 grams of carbs, uh, 96 kcals total. That's a 56, uh, that's a 56 calorie deficit or our delta. So how does that get made up? How do we track that? And how do we do that? Right. So pretty much what we can do is we can take those 56 calories and divide them by four. Why four? Well, alcohol is a sugar. To me, a sugar is a carb. From that perspective, what I'm taking is uh, the carb kcal value and pretty much dividing that delta by four. All right. So that leaves you with 14 carbs. Uh, if we took the 56 divided by four or 14 carbs and added it from the 10 carbs listed on the label already, we have 24 grams of carbs in that one can of beer. Making sense? Um, so extremely at a very, very high level, this is what I recommend to all my clients and this is what I do. Um, take the servings of a KCAL. So again, this whole entire can right here of beer is 96 calories. All we're simply going to do is take 96 divided by 4. That's going to make up your, uh, that's how you're going to track it. You're going to track it as carb. So if you have this one can of beer, you're going to track it as 24 grams of carbs to your day-to-day -day intake. Simple enough. Um, with wine, generally with wine, what you can do is if you're using MyFitnessPal or any other type of food tracker, you can pretty much just uh, use the barcode scanner, scan the bottle, and what you'll find is it'll give you the caloric value. And um, what you can do is take, again, take the caloric value, divide it by four, and for whatever is considered a serving, which is usually about eight ounces for a glass of wine, is going to give you your uh, carb source uh, towards uh, your day. Uh, for liqueur and liquor, it's pretty much the same thing. I believe you can, uh, I don't drink much liqueur or liquor. Uh, but what you can do is, same thing, if you get a bottle of Di Sorono is one of my favorite liqueurs. If you get Di Sorono, uh, scan the barcode, and then pretty much what it'll do, it'll give you uh, your uh, caloric value for your serving, which I believe on average liquor is either one or two ounces for a general serving. Straight liquor is actually higher. You get less, but a higher caloric value where versus a can. So for 96 calories of a beer, you probably get, I don't know, like maybe two ounces of alcohol, even though one's stronger than the other. Um, but in essence, overall, that's it. It's pretty much simple. So again, you want to pretty much take um, your alcohol intake or yeah, your alcohol intake and your liquor in intake and just contribute to your daily carbs. Uh, I'll get, do another video to talk about how uh, alcohol interacts with your body, how it regulates, how it's burned, and all these other things and stuff like that. But what I really wanted to do is just a really quick, simple video because again, a lot of people have a lot of clients that travel for business. And when they go to business dinners, they don't want to be the one sitting there drinking a water or drinking a diet soda. They want to have a drink with their business partners or their colleagues or whatever it is that you do. Um, so from that perspective, that's all you can simply do. One of the key things you can always do is go online and create your own foods if you're using my fitness pal. Um, that's generally what I do with the beers. So on average, you know, we drink, you know, a lot of yingling. Uh, Miller Lite and other sub beers and so all I really did was is in my fitness power created my own food So if I know if I'm gonna have two yinglings I'll track two whole yinglings and I take that number and I contribute it to my daily carb intake All right, so again, don't get silly with it. Don't get over the top. Don't sit there and say oh, I have 
100 grams of carbs left, let me go ahead and have four beers. That's kind of taking it over the top. And again, I'll do another video talking about uh, the impacts of alcohol on the body in regards to your results and what you want to do. Uh, but what happens is, is by being able to do this, it sets my clients up for a great position to be successful. Uh, with my female clients, majority of them, they like to at least have like a glass of wine after a day of work or something like that. It works really well into their day to day. Um, you know, and quite honestly, I do have show prep clients that like to drink at least a glass of wine just due to the health benefits of having a glass of wine a day and so on and so forth. Maybe I have a male client that's going on a date night, uh, with his wife, significant other and spouse, and they want to go out drinking and you want a preset knowing that you can order Yingling on draft and it's a 12 ounce, it's a 12 ounce draft, um, and so on and so forth. So I hope that helps. Um, again, going to try to bring more information, do some more whiteboarding and stuff, but again, pretty simple, pretty easy, um, and pretty cutthroat to the point. So, uh, all my social media down below in the description box, uh, Facebook, Instagram, obviously YouTube, subscribe, give a thumbs up, uh, be sure to leave a comment, leave a question if you have anything on it, uh, www.atn as in nancycoaching.com for all your show prep, uh, off season sports performance, personal training needs, nutrition, training, supplementation, consulting, um, and more. Well, I appreciate the time and appreciate everybody taking the uh, time to watch the video. Until the next one.